everybody. Grumpy Game Dev, and I'm here with with TBD Gamer. Say hi. Hello. There he is. And today, it's episode four of How Not to F Sharp, Pipes, and Other Plumbing. In this episode, I talk about the operators that truly stand out to newcomers to the language, most notably the forward pipe, but also the backward pipe and the composition operator. These operators are the foundation of function and monadic operations. Yes, I said monadic. In many ways, these sorts of operations can be likened to fluent interfaces in C Sharp, but as we shall see in the example, it is not a perfect comparison. The forward pipe takes tuples from the left and curries them on the right, and the backward pipe takes tuples from the right and, that's, and curries them also on the right. It enables a sort of leapfrogging and monadic way of processing things. The composition operator allows us to staple operations together so that it looks like a single operation. And we got some other linky things down in the doobly-doo. It'll be down, down there where it always is. That's where that stuff goes. I made a little C-sharp thing that, because the closest thing to this is a, is a, is a fluent interface. Okay? Gotcha. So, all right, so I made a fluent calculator. We're adding and multiplying earth shattering operations. So in here you have a current value and you seed it during the constructor and then you can add stuff to it and it returns the thing and you can multiply things, it returns the thing. And then I made some compound operations of add then multiply with each of those and then it uses the fluent operation to keep on going and multiply then add but so the the difference here is this is slightly closer to the way f sharp would do it in that every time you do this operation it makes you a brand new fluent calculator so really uh so then when i go to my program and i'm in this i'm in this one so i can do a dot net run yeah, and it just just poops out those numbers just so that there's here's a thing and I put the little little other numbers next to it so you can see oh okay that's that's what that's what that is and that's how that works and I can totally scroll I totally can scroll so here here's a new hmm. say again I was just gonna say that <clears throat> yeah it doesn't doesn't it reads pretty well right so it's here's the fluid calculator you feed that in there then you add that in there and then it should yep that's a five First time second, there's that, add multiply, 25, add then multiply, works out to be the same thing. Uh, should really have done this the other way, multiply then add. I should do it this way. Yep. I really should do this. Right. Oh, and that should be second. I'm so prepared. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll, I'll totally check this in. I Actually, I will check it in. <laughs> on the fly demo chain it's it's you know what like 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 we don't do this in production <laughs> so multiply then add which is five dots so that gives us an 11 and then multiply then add gives us the same one so this, this is not this is not mysterious this is not uh super we've seen a lot of fluent interfaces actually they're pretty common now right yeah yeah depending on how you design your api yeah, do you do you like to make them that way, or is it are you more, um, or is it depends on the thing? It really depends on the thing. I'm I'm, you know, if I'm trying to describe something, then yes, I'd use Fluent because it it kind of I like to be able to read the code. So sure, it, it, it's done. Like I wouldn't really choose new Fluent calculator there. I'd maybe do calculate. I'd make it a static construct like a calculator factory method dot. kind of thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, but. So from a design perspective, my design would be slightly different there, but yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be fluent calculator dot make, and it would just, yeah. there's, there's one. Okay, yeah. No, I'm, yeah. I'm totally there. Because then anymore, after, after like inversion of control really took hold, I'm like, we don't use the new operator anymore, do we? No. No, we really well, don't. We do. It's just hidden in the bowels a lot more. Well, we don't and, use uh, it. Somewhere, yeah. somewhere, somebody's doing a dirty new someplace. It, in it, here. If you look at the startup of an ASP Night Call website, it's it's a builder or a fluent API to do right. that as well. And that's so, and yeah, service that's, collection. They're all fluent stuff. So we're used. To, we use these all the time in, in .NET yeah. and in .NET Core. So let's take a look 
at my uh, F sharp version of it. So here's an add, and these are these are curried and not tuppled. So you have again the you have the individually parentheses ones with their types. Yep. And for one thing, for one thing, no curly braces. So really, that's the whole declaration. Um, this is the main program file, which is really the only place where I can do top level stuff. C sharp nine is going to have the same thing for for C sharp. Right. Where you can just make functions on this. Yeah. So add and multiply, very similar to actually to the kind of little example we did in episode three. And then I made mm -hmm. an add, in order to demonstrate the, for, the single forward pipe operator, I made an add then multiply piped. Where there's an add amount, there's a multiply amount, and there's an original amount. And you might think, well, why is the original amount at the end? Because in functional, we're off. What we operate on is the last thing we pass. Okay. Yeah. Unlike in most uh unlike in most imperative things where the thing that you're operating on, if it's if there's a thing that you're working with, it's first. Just like yeah. in, in like a static method, you're this you're you're this whatever parameter in your static uh extension method would be the first thing. Mm -hmm. so more or less we just put it on the end because well because because of these sorts of things where I can say here's the original amount pipe it over here to the end of add amount, and so it's going to take original amount and it's going to add add amount, and then, then you're going to have a result, and then that's going to pipe that over into, multi into multiply amount, and you're going to get it through, and so you can see that you can chain a bunch of different things together like this, and go, I want to take this, it's sort of like using um, if you ever used a calculator that had reverse Polish notation if you didn't, you knew some nerdy kid who did, right? I, I, I knew a guy that wrote a really popular app for, the, uh, for phones that did Polish notation. Right. Now, there are those, and those guys could do amazing things with calculators that most people could not do. <laughs> yes. They were, they were very good at that, but that's because they were basically doing stack-based programming with operations. Uh, right. And they're, they're closer to this style of doing stuff. So that's the one where you pipe it, where it actually has all three parameters and it takes them all and does the thing. Add then multiply here does exactly the same operation, but with without with just taking here's the add add amount, making that's a function that takes an int and returns an int, and concatenating that operation with multiply. Okay. And then the and there is no original amount. They're like, well, where's the original amount? This actually produces an int to int. That's a function that takes an int and returns an int. So we have no actual int. It's, it's all magic away. <laughs> it's all sorcery away. You're like, um, oh, all right. And that's what that thing does. See, I, I'm only ever used to have seen that when I did C out in 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 <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, you, think you, of a C plus plus something like that. That goes out to something. That's 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 yeah. No, well, kind of. It's actually probably closer to that that usage mm -hmm. uh, of C out. Is like take this and take whatever this is and pipe it into that thing. Right. And then you can do a multiply then add similar similar thing and and produce the same result. You just reverse the operations. Where in F sharp, apparently, I did that correctly. And then, then I have again first, second, third, which and yeah. and for the first several of these, it's rather the same. And you wind up. Let me switch over here. Uh, and run. Just thinking about it. There we go. So there are a bit bit more of these. Are those the same numbers you put in? Uh, some some of them are similar. There's, but but it it becomes a little bit different because of how F sharp because of the order because first, second, third. This still works the same, where this one's still five, and these two are together. So, but because the third parameter is actually the original number, it kind of does it differently than what what C sharp was, where it, it's taking the first, it's going from one side to the other, and this one it's taking the thing on the far side and then doing things. Huh. So add the multiply pipe. So now I'm seeing the actual example. Of it kind of I'm. I'm yep. So it takes third. Multi and then right. adds first, and then takes that and result, multiplies, multiplies it by, by second. second. Right. And well, then the second, then uh, example four does the same thing. Right. 
but it does it. This one does it where you're explicitly looking at. Okay, I take the original mount, pipe it into there, pipe it into there. This is right. going to. I don't need to. I know how to construct this. Uh, this this whole thing as one operation, and right. this is what does that. But you can do it either way. And really, I don't know that the IL is any different. I suppose which is probably. which is the preferred way of writing that. Um. That that is a good question. I don't know the answer to that because I I I F sharp by myself. <laughs> um, this is the more clever way. So it's always it's always about keep your code readable. This right. is much more readable than this. Mm. And of course, you yeah. can always do that, which is then almost as readable as right. that. Now, so I'm still getting the curried concept. Okay. level in my head all right well the um the pipe greater than yep feeds original amount into it's the same as the ad is doing this yes yep yeah whereas the the double arrow which is composition operator composition operator yep right takes this here function because this becomes an int int right and this is also an int to uh, int that. okay so it takes right this int and as long as the output of this one is the same as the input of this one it allows us to well we could just staple these two steps together Right. And take our input and produce our output. And it could okay. be it could be a different type too. You could through through the course of it it goes through a different thing. It goes through a different sort of could convert to a double, it could be a record of whatever. Mm -hmm. So that so this is quite powerful, but it's not maybe not as readable and this this one is you start to get a little bit clever when you're doing that. And don't get too clever about it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but this is this is the monadic way to do things. Okay, so so in the C sharp example, if we can jump back there, okay, there is sure, no real same. equivalent to this, right? In so much as you know, there's in the F sharp version, they're just it's it's kind of feeding the value down to the next thing. Whereas in this in the C sharp version, we're creating new objects every time to represent these things. Is F sharp doing? I mean, yes. You'd have to look at the IL to understand it, but is right. F sharp internally just handling all that for you to make it cleaner? So you're just worrying more about the code and not. Uh, I, I think in the case of primitive types, it makes it cleaner. But when we have other things that aren't primitives, right? Um, like record types, and that's probably going to have to be soon record types, but yeah. we're we're not quite there yet. That's also coming. C sharp, isn't it? They, they are. Right. They are also coming to C sharp because because that's what they do. But uh, if if I just go very very quickly, type um, call you point equals uh, x, and that's an int, and y, and that's an int, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. Ah, it, it likes Pascal case. Thanks, Linter. <laughs> So point so you, the way the way you make these is you go let point be uh, x equals zero y zero and there are ways to do this so that you don't have that you don't have to put your semicolons because we don't like semicolons in F sharp <laughs> we we have some places where yeah. you can use them to put go that is excuse to get rid. Nobody like nobody <laughs> likes semicolons. Nobody likes semicolons. Everybody hates yeah. them. Um, but so we have that, and then you could make you can make functions that take points and produce points. Or you have right. functions that take points and reduce uh, integers, like I don't know the the square of the distance or whatever. That right. is x squared time x squared plus y squared. Then you could have something else that turns that into whatever else. Who know who mm -hmm. knows what you want to do with it? But you can then as right. long as the output of the one function. Is the same as the input of the next function. You can use the you can use the shift right operator here because that's how I learned yeah. this operator first. Gotcha. Uh, shift, that one's shift right, but so that's what we can do with that. And then uh, that takes us up to about here, which is about the same as what the C sharp 
program did, which is multiply yeah. then add, add then multiply. So now with with the pipe operator, first example, I'm piping one thing, it leapfrogs over to the end. And then all done. In the second example, this is the double forward pipe, which takes a tuple with two things and lobs them over this expression and then and untuples them into curried form. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do we need all that? <laughs> <laughs> there are, there are kind of 18 different methods of <laughs> no there's, it only goes up to three it only goes up to oh, three. Oh, well it it's only three it only goes up to three and i've i've never okay i've used this one i've used the double the double pipe forward i have not used i've not had a need to use the triple pipe forward okay and then the, the triple pipe forward to take first second third lob them all over and oh, untouple them into curried form yes so that's the that's madness why are you doing that <laughs> Uh, that, that seems like someone was writing code uh, like on line 38 and then thought, oh, you know what? I need to feed this parameter into these this thing, but it'd be nicer if I could read it this way instead of just... Well, because a lot of things return tuples, it. right? A lot of things yeah. do return tuples, and sometimes the tuppling and untuppling is a big thing. So I think actually right. what it sounds like is episode 5 is tuples. Really. Yeah. I, I think that's what we have to get to next. Because you know the the whole thing with confused me with the tuples versus the the regular argument argument list. The, the, I I can see it now. You say the word tuples, it makes sense because it's you you need to it's it's not just pass these values in. It's explode and pass these values in, right? Or, or expand and pass these values in, so they become arguments. Yes. Like if that was a if that if that was a method that took a tuple, yep. Then you just single pipe. Then you just yeah. single pipe it. But it takes a. It's like nope. I don't know what you're talking about because that's right. that needs to be an int, and that's an int star int. I think that's pretty much exactly what it will tell me. Yes, but it's it's a type mismatch. Expecting an int star int to type a, but given an int, int to int, int to int type int star int does not match type int. Because yeah. what's what's more plain than that? Um. I I don't know how you get more plain than that. It's, it's pretty <laughs> it's simple. Ob obviously, <laughs> like, obviously, <laughs> not too. Every it's... time I see asterisk, I'm either thinking of multiplication or a pointer. No, I know, and that's <laughs> uh, yeah. That's why that's why tuples are going to have to be a thing. And then why did you you're not like, you're not un underlining? So you'll it'll figure it out eventually. So so far, I'm learning that F sharp developers don't like words. Right. D no like... symbols. Symbols, symbols, yep. and lots of different ways of doing something. Now, uh, is... yeah, flexibility. Oh, flexibility. Flexibility. Okay, okay I'll, I'll reserve my my other question because it will derail too much. But no, no, go go right, go right ahead because this is this is this is for the people who are like, hey, I want to learn how to F sharp, but <laughs> apparently I'm watching. So, of course, if you're watching a series called How Not to F Sharp. Learn and wanting to learn how to F sharp, there's something a little bit wrong with you. I already know there's something a little bit wrong with me. Sometimes you learn how to do something by learning how to not do it. It's true. Yeah. Let me let me give you this horrible example of what you can do so that you can avoid yeah. I'll be a negative example. Yeah. So what's your other question? So is there another way? So can you explode the tuple? Without that operator, so oh sure, is sure. An, is there yeah. an operator to expand the tuple? So if I go let x be zero comma one, because that's a that's a tuple, mm -hmm. and the type of that is int star int, mm -hmm. which is which is that I can say let y z equals x, and then that's gonna be an int, and that's gonna be an int, and it's gonna pull those things out like that. Yeah. But we'll do that for episode. We'll we'll explore that more episode five. I think that's the right. I think that gets its own episode there. Yeah, fun with tuples. Fun yeah. with tuples. <laughs> Come to my tuppleware party. <laughs> <laughs> that's so clever. Got to use that one. Come to my tuppleware. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, come come for the come for the brisket. Stay for the tuples. I don't know what. It's, uh, come come for the come for the fry up. Yeah, come yeah, for the fry up. Yeah, the fry up. Well, well, I'm, I'm down for a fry up. I was told there'd be fry up. Oh. Okay, so 
Yeah, so here we are, I'd multiply that, and, and I have the pipe that way operator, which takes that mm -hmm. and staples it onto there, which that one looks completely useless, right? Yes. Let me go let x, which for whatever reason, the function x that ta it takes unit and returns an int is returns third, okay? Okay. And I want to say call x and return it and put it here on the end. Okay. If I do that, it says uh, you can't do that because F sharp doesn't see it this way. F sharp right. sees it this way. Right. So it sees a unit here on the end. Now, if I have two options, one, I can put these in parentheses to disambiguate that, yep. or I can back do that pipe into. And, and pipe pipe it back into that. So I when it's resolving that, it resolves that from right to left rather than... Left yep, so it, gets, it says, figure out what this thing, what is this thing? And this thing, it goes, oh, that's, an, that's a function that takes an int and produces an int. Okay, and then we stop here. What is this thing? Oh, it re resolves to an int. Okay, now, now, now do this part. And that's how you do that. Right. So, it, it, you know, it's a little strange, but it's like, yeah, because it doesn't, doesn't look very useful here. It's like, well, I don't need that. You can just do that. Just do that then. And as a matter of fact, yeah. yes, just do that. This is not, this is not the case yeah. either. I'm showing you, you can do this. Yeah. But that's the use case. What you just demonstrated there is a use case that most people, if they just saw this example, they'd be like, huh? Why do uh, they do that? No. It takes them a while to become expert with a language to understand they can do. Yes. So showed. I will I will tell you, I hardly ever use the back pipe operators. In fact, mm -hmm. I don't think in Seafarers of Spore you'll see a single. I don't know for certain. There might be one. But generally, I don't use this one. So. I mean, this ne those next two examples, I can. These are these are much more like oh, okay. I've got a I've got a tuppled result from some other function, mm -hmm. and throw that in, in in here at the end. Two either two up two up either a two tuple or a three tuple. Throw those on. That one's totally ah okay great handy for those yeah. times when I'm. But then again, so let's let's say I did, I did uh, x returns. And returns and int star int star int, right? Right. So, and then I can say, okay, on. I, I can do that. But yeah. in that case, then why why did I why did I I either do this or I say uh, let a B, C, equal X, X and yeah. then just pass A, B, C that way. Right. Or I, so you can pass them from either side, and there are times, basically I'm convinced that, well, this is, this, this is also stuff that comes from the, the, the parent of F-sharp, which is OCaml, where I, I'm pretty sure that the people who laid down the foundations for OCaml were just trying to be really clever with their operators. Yeah. So I don't I don't have nearly as much utility for this one as I do the uh, as I do some of these other ones. I think looking back on it, I can I can kind of see that that the, okay if you if you have a method so instead of so obviously these are simple examples to 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 illustrate the points but right. If you had a method that returned a tuple and and like for line forty seven, then pass it into this. I suppose yes. it comes down to how you start to think about those those character sets like to me it become you know when 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 i first looked at lambda expressions sure. equals greater than always got me and then it was like goes to right that's what it's called goes to and i'm like okay now i can read that it doesn't make any sense if you think about it but it it it, it is x goes to this and, yeah. and you start to use the your language to as you're talking about it like to me that says second third pipe pipe greater than multiply yep. than so out. basically it's a, each of these pipes and this thing is up oh, and this thing leapfrogs this is the yeah. take this take this little guy and leapfrog him over here take two of them take three of them right 
can you can't have a fourth. You could define so you a, have a fourth. You could define one. Right. But don't. <laughs> well, because you can define the operators. Yes. Is, uh, yeah, oh, right, because an operator is just a thing that. Uh, is so just so a let. With inline. I think I can do this. Uh, oh boy. I mean, yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to go like here's F. Uh, a B C D is F A B C D. I think that defines it. It could be <laughs> okay. Like I, yeah, don't. But don't. Those, that's kind of like <laughs> that's if, if I'm right. That's kind of like macros in C and C plus. There, right? There's <clears throat> there's there's a lot of that, and um, sometimes you can wind up. Um, giving you some yeah now there's there's other thing because a lot of times okay because right at the end of end of a function if it if it returns unit because okay one thing i cannot do here and i don't think i've covered this at all so actually i'll just take the regular old form here if i go yeah. just just do this operation and don't do anything to it Mm -hmm. It's going to tell me that it doesn't like this. This because the result of this expression has a type int and it's implicitly ignored. It's only yellow. It's just a warning. But so if you want to just do it that way, if you don't care about the return type at all, what you do is you pipe it into a function called ignore. Right. Which just eats stuff. So if it explicitly returns returns something. Yep. You, if it's not unit, and if it's not the right. last thing, because the last right. thing is the return value, right? You ignore it. Otherwise, it's a warning. I don't know if it it may it may build just fine, but I think I think it's a warning. I don't do it because it yells at me. Yeah, it's a hey. The result of this yeah. expression, blah 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 blah. So please ignore. Right. Yeah. Oh, so what I did once. And never did again. Um, so, or I did a uh, let inline I call that the pipe it into the bunghole operator. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that, and then it, I forget exactly what it was, but then it would basically staple ignore on the end of something. Gotcha. So sh shove it up your <laughs> whatever. Then you then in the last thing in the chain, you could use that operator. But right. then I realized like this is you can read you can redefine operators in F sharp, but don't. Okay. So that's 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 very dangerous. It, well, it is as it, a newcomer to a language to learn that you can do that and then think, oh, that's a good idea. It's not a good idea. Yeah, take great often care with it, that. Yeah, oftentimes it's the lower level versions of the language that actually use those features, not not really for consumption, but they have to be there to support the rest of the language. Yeah, no, you and you've invented your own little dialect of this language. It's not right. standard anymore. You've made a private language, and nobody can understand your stuff at all. I don't even want to see what that would generate yeah. as far as IL goes. I have, yeah, I don't know. But they're, the, the thing is, is many of these operators really are just functions. I don't know if I, mm -hmm. if it, if I hover over it, will it? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it'd expand out as a function underneath. Because again, the, the, these produce IL, which would then be able to technically yep. be reconstituted back to C sharp. Just as easily as F sharp, right? And I've, yeah, I some some of these things I don't I don't even know. So there's yeah, just wait till we get to like uh, just wait till we get to discriminated unions. And this, oh. just discriminated unions are a special type of of horror. So I guess for me the pipes and stuff just it just it would take me a long time to grasp them because. Um, even if we, even if the the C sharp example was more how I do it, it still wouldn't read like this. And I don't think there's any equivalent of doing this. 
um, or any design I would do that would would really uh, maybe extension methods would be the closest I I come to to this format. Yeah, like but but even okay. so, a lot of time extension methods are made for a fluent integrate. But let me show you this example, yeah. and and we're not at not at some of the structures and stuff yet. But so list dot map, okay. In list dot map, so this is this is a list. When you put a bracket, and you put some put some things in it. Right. You can put semicolons in between them, but remember, we don't like semicolons. Now, when we do map, uh, we we make a lambda. We and since since a lambda is a function, we put we in F sharp we put the fun in function. I do like actually that. saying fun. <laughs> so we say what we want to do here is we want to say x plus one. Right. And this is more or less. And then, see, and it, it's still a list, it's right? So, yeah. so you still have to ignore it. So right. what? What more or less? This is is a. This is a select. This is a yes. link. So link select is what yeah. this does. Yeah, it's going to take the values, manipulate them. But now, you can, you can do other things now. I could also, there's, there's some other list functions, like list.iter takes a fun, fun, not function, fun x, and it returns unit. And it doesn't, it doesn't like that one because, well, that is called ignore. Don't, don't okay. do that. But if I, so if I want to go uh, x print fun, percent d, with a, if we spell print fun correctly, we say, <laughs> all right, first we're going to map map this into and that plus it. one, and then we're going to print them. But of course, why would you do that? You it's would just do that in, in your, just make one iter, add one to it, and then print fun it. Well, in C sharp, that'd be select x goes to x plus one for each. Then a for each, right? Yep. Yeah, you're doing a for yeah, each. This is, yeah, this is basically for each. Iter is for each. Right. And there's there's other there's other there's and we're we're gonna get to a whole thing somewhere down the line on folds, which is in li the link aggregate function, where there's an accumulator. Ooh. Those those things get confusing. They they can be, <laughs> but it's folds folds is the because we don't because we have a we have a for loop we have a while loop you'll never yeah. see me use them. But we have them. Right. All right. So thanks so much for coming by and my, letting me confuse you with pipe operators. My, my brain's worrying now on some of this stuff. Like what I've just seen is, is you know, I, 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 again, I'm, I'm seeing the flexibility of the language. I'm, I'm starting to believe that, you know, they kept solving new problems. <laughs> it's the way it reads like, but it's. Well, yes. And the thing is, is. One of these days, I'll have a have a code kata where I really just do the guess my number game, and I'll do it both okay. in C sharp and F sharp. And you'll you'll look and go, there's not a single. How how did you do that without a single mutable variable? How did you do that? Hmm. Because yeah. I can do that, but it requires thinking about it very very differently. Uh, yeah, it 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 feels so far. F sharp feels more scientific. It, that makes me sense. Yeah. C sharp feels much easier to pick up and run with, but yes. F sharp feels like there's a lot more concept to it than there is. I know that they both have, you know, the constructs of what you get used to, but it's it does feel a little. I I can see why it's intimidating to to start with. But it yes, and and there's uh, a lot of times the the main barrier is the the person showing it to you, right? The person mm -hmm. showing it to you has been using it for a long time, so they've already they've already made the leap to well, why is this useful? How is this useful? And you don't have yeah. uh, anybody really empathizing very much with your imperative ways. Like, well, just it it needs to be more functional. It needs to be more idiomatic. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, but that I don't even know what that means. Use a monad, monad. <laughs> Use a monad. What's a monad? And they'll send you to a page. They will send you to a page. And that page yeah. will tell you that a monad is a monoid in the category of endofunctors. That is what that page will tell you. Clear as mud. Yeah. <laughs> now, the thing is, is people ask me that. People do ask me that question now because they're like, hey, it's yeah. an F sharp guy. I'll ask him the, the monad question because that's it's what you do. It's you, troll, you troll the F sharp. It's with love. It's always with love. 
And I go, okay, one, the monoid in the category of endofunctors. Two, you wrap your types in a burrito in order to solve problems that you can only solve with burrito-wrapped types. Which is actually a lot clearer of an explanation of what a monad is, but because they're not really even sure what sort of problems you need to wrap things in burritos to solve, <laughs> they don't aren't able to comprehend the burrito answer any different. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Would you like some last words? Um, I actually have something to advertise this time. <laughs> um, my project, um, I've started a, a project for collecting uh, other development streamers. So, oh, yep, uh, that's true, and I'm, I'm on it. Well, yeah. I'm, I put an issue in. I have not, have, have not looked. Nope. Okay, I'll right. have to I'll um, put that in. I the... need to fix something, because GitHub's not resolving the page properly. Oh, so it's taking, it, it, takes, it takes ages and eventually oh, sure. resolves. But, so let me but, get, uh, yeah, let me get, I'll get that in the show notes. Yep.